Hi all, I have a very interesting game from the World Championship candidates to show you between Hikaru Nakamura and Vishy Anand. So played on the 25th of March 2016. Let's have a look. Hikaru playing white kicked off with c4, the English opening. We have e5, knight c3, knight f6. Pretty standard stuff. Knight f3, this is the most popular move. Knight c6, g3. Now black usually plays bishop b4. And this is very popular, knight d5. Uh, the black usually plays bishop c5 in this position. So, for example, bishop c5, this kind of continuation is, is fairly normal. Uh, here, also popular though, is this move e4. And we have knight h4, which, if you remember the expression, a knight on the rim is dim. But it is usefully probing some squares here. Black plays castling move, and then we have bishop g2. And there's some pressure on black center here. We have d6. And you might think, isn't g5 on the cards, potentially, to try and trap this knight? Because this d6 move has controlled the f5 square now. a3 is played. After bishop c5, white actually casually castles. So there's a big question here already, tactically at least. Why can't black play g5? Vichy Anand played rook e8. In this position, let's have a look. g5 can actually be responded to energetically with d4, hitting the bishop and hitting g5, double attack. So this is not very good for black. Obviously doesn't want this huge gigantic pin on f6. And if he took here, this is just very nice for white in this position. Black's created loads of weaknesses around his king. And if you look at this, it's not very pleasant at all for black. And also the center is still weak. So um, yeah, rookie eight, not being tempted by g5. But in this position, and this is quite a rare position actually in live book already, uh, e3 was played. Now let's just, just step back for a moment. Why, why? Why is this a rare position? I'll just show you where it uh, ventured off. It actually, <laughs> for, for uh, after bishop g2, uh, d6 is quite rare in fact usually rookie 8 73 games so already after d6 we're going into quite rare territory uh, just for the record so anyway back to the game yet yeah. so in this position after e3 again it looks as though this g5 is very tempting here because with e3 hasn't white just killed off his d4 resource G5 is actually played on the board now. So it's a big question, isn't this knight trapped? Doesn't this just look a little bit ridiculous? Although white doesn't have d4 anymore in this position with the idea of bishop g5, he does have b4 and it's hitting this bishop, of course, and preparing bishop b2, putting pressure on f6. It's a very, very interesting uh, mechanism this b4 in this position. Uh, black played bishop b6, and then we have bishop b2. So again, the bishop has managed to counterattack on f6, basically, with this method. So no time really to take here, because otherwise knight takes f6 would be a disaster for black. So um, we have knight takes d5, and alas, after c takes d5, again, another counter attack. The problem with black getting this knight for this one is his weaknesses around his king. Vichy tries to compensate, though, with knight d4. And this is an intriguing position. White's knight is still trapped. And if we just play e takes d4, 
we have these treble pawns. And of the g takes h4, it might actually be the case that black's okay because his king's kind of shielded by this this pawn. This might actually be nearly okay for black. And in fact, here, this kind of position should be fairly okay for black with chances. So an intriguing position and a great theme for the game so far this this knight on h4. A cautionary tower, if this works for either side, should the knight be on h4? An ingenious move was played in this position now. Can you guess what Ikaro Nakamura played? Absolutely ingenious. He didn't take on d4, that's the clue. He played, if I give you five seconds starting from now. Okay, d3. Yeah, it's it just seems to be um, very nice for white after this, even though black finally gets to take the knight. Now after d takes e4, there's a major issue with this one. It can't go to these squares without being taken. You'd think, and if knight b5, then there's actually just a4 trapping the knight, and black will still be left with these gaping weaknesses around this king. So actually, uh, Vichy did try knight e6, uh, and yeah, again, so white's actually getting the material back with the advantage of having weakened black's position quite significantly, and now liberating move e5, opening up both bishops, using the pin on the d6 pawn as well. We have h takes g, H takes G because black is on E3 here. Don't really want to take it like this. That'll be winning for black. So we have um, in this position now Queen G5. E takes D6, opening up this diagonal fully. Rook takes Queen B3 now with the idea potentially of Queen C3 looking at that diagonal, looking to mate on H8 potentially. H5. So that there's always a defensive resource at least to try and cover things. Rook a d one. Rook h six. But now strong move rook d five taking control of a lot of central squares and hitting the queen. We have queen e seven. And now another very strong move queen c four cutting across the center. And now threatening also queen f4. So these moves, it's like white's got a huge central control here. If you look at the bishops, the crossfire of the bishops and white's pieces, they're crossing around the center and having implications for black's king safety and pieces generally. So queen f4 will be next. We have bishop g4, queen f4, the rook moves, and another move coming up crossing center look black black's control of the center is non-existent the white's got these huge bishops we have queen d6 and another powerful centralizing move here spells disaster for black bishop e4 is played this is a very very difficult position for black indeed in fact vichy resigned here Let's have a look at this final position. Now, if rook f6, check, and we win that rook potentially. If here, we can just take the rook simply and sh it just go for the king. This is pretty strong. It's just a king chase for a bit. And yeah, it's going to be decisive. And winning material, etc. That's just horrible. So rook f6 isn't doing very well. If rook g7, powerful move here is rook g5, looking at the rook, crosswire. And um, here, if queen takes, yeah, we just take the rook first. 
if a rook takes, the gaping weaknesses are shown up. And this position, bishop e5, say, we can take here. Say the rook moves somewhere. Here, we've got a mate in free, showing up the weaknesses of the king. And when does the rook move actually in this position? It goes here. Bishop f6 again. Very strong France like Bishop d5 coming up. Black's king has just been completely compromised, basically. So it seems as though rook g7, yeah, it just leads to rook g5 here. This is a really strong forcing move in this position. Uh, the strongest, but you know, even without that, well, it's got other strong moves in this position, just taking here. The position is just really, really strong. Here, the bishops are really pointing at black's king as well as controlling central squares. Yeah, so it's a pretty hopeless position here after bishop e4, it seems. f5 is a tactical trying, but we can just take. And if rook f8, there's always a check here. This position is a disaster for black. This is losing material. It's king safety shot to pieces. Yep. So a cautionary tell. Let's turn this off. A cautionary tell in this game about the knight on h4. If black's too keen to try and win it with g5. Fascinating. Fascinating how this, this works. Tactically, that uh, it kind of backfires this move. G5 is a is a backfire. What we saw with uh, the bishop b2. It seems to work out very, very nicely uh, for white here. Yeah. Even though the knight on the rim is dim, it can provoke weaknesses. Maybe that's the extension of this quotation. <laughs> if it can provoke severe weaknesses around the opponent's king, like in this example, it's not so dim, it's provocative. Okay. I hope you got something from that. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.